NCAA Southeast Regional Championships. Tonight's third game will be between the Western Kentucky University Hilltoppers and the Nebraska Cornhuskers. And now here are the starting lineups. For Nebraska, at a forward, a 6'5 junior from Washington, D.C., number 30, Bernard Day. For Western Kentucky, at a forward, a 6'9 junior from Cincinnati, Ohio, number 33, Kennard Johnson. For Nebraska, at the other forward, a 6'7 senior from Lincoln, Nebraska, number 50, John Matsky. And for Western, at the other forward, a 6'3 junior from Buffalo, New York, number 30, Ray Swagger. For Nebraska at center, a 6'5 senior from Natchez, Mississippi, number 32, Chris Logan. And for Western Kentucky at center, a 6'8 junior from Alexander City, Alabama, number 55, Clarence Martin. At one guard for Nebraska, a 6'3 senior from Jackson, Tennessee, number 13, Harvey Marshall. And for Western Kentucky, a six-foot sophomore from Owensboro, Kentucky, number 15, James McNary. And the other guard for Nebraska, a 6'1 junior from Muncie, Indiana, number 20, Brian Carr. Western Kentucky, a 6'1 senior from Jackson, Mississippi, number 20, Billy Gordon. The coach for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, Mr. Mo Iba, and for the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers, Mr. Clem Heskin. And the officials for this game, on your left, Mark Reichling, Charlie Back in the center, and Sam Licklider on the right. And so we're set to go. Western Kentucky, great basketball background. Nebraska, known for its football, but a great foot basketball ground, too. We'll return the opening tip-off after these messages. Against Western Kentucky, a team they played just one time in history, and Western won that game a long, long time ago, 1947. Western Kentucky, the white, Nebraska in the red. There's the man to watch for Western Kentucky, Kennard Johnson and uh, Billy Gordon in the backcourt. And here, Western Kentucky controls the tap. McNary, their playmaking point guard, and Billy Gordon in the backcourt, but they've started this man, Swagger, as a third guard, trying to match up on the side. McNary clears outside to Gordon. Gordon to the line, off the dribble. Rebound ripped off and put in by Martin. There's something Nebraska will have to contend with, Dave, the power and strength of Western. Steal by McNary. Well, Nebraska is a very small basketball team without Hoffman, extremely small. And uh, that inside game is going to be a problem for them. They're going to have to really work hard and try to avoid foul Well, they're excited about this first uh, trip ever. Logan breaks out from that back screen. And a personal foul is going to be called, I believe, against Brian Carr of Nebraska. And that's the first personal of the ball game. And Carr is going to be a very, very key man for the Cornhuskers. He has to control the tempo. Western out of the Sun Belt Conference as an at-large. They lost in the Hopper Tournament Championship to UAB. They to run up in the center court. A lot of motion here for Kentucky in the passing game. Kennard Johnson, left uh, smooth left-hander. Another rebound by Clarence Martin, and he's fouled by Logan. Well, again, you see Nebraska's problem. They're going at center with Chris Logan at 6'5". He switched over from forward. He's done a great job since Hoppin's been out. But he's going at 6'5", up against Clarence Martin at 6'8", 225. And on both of the first two trips for Western Kentucky, Martin gets the push. Well, Martin, who had to undergo a very extensive knee surgery back in December of 1983, missed all of last year, has slowly got back in condition. He's probably playing the best condition he has now in over three years. Is a very powerful fellow. Two things I think are key for Nebraska if, if they've got a chance to win this ball game without a hop, and when you get to NCAA play, that's tough. One is they're going to have to control that defensive board better than obviously they've done in the first minute here of the game, and I think they will. They'll battle. And secondly, they've got to handle this full court press right here. This is the pressure. Western realizing Nebraska's going to want a very slow tempo. And they can control the pace with the ball handling of this man, Brian Carr. And a key matchup, Carr and McNeary. Was really good pressure here by Kentucky. Western Kentucky, the man to man defense. Not the pace they want. Turnover. Western will get it. 
And so far, Western Kentucky has had their say. Clem the Jim Haskins over there with that famous red towel. Western Kentucky history. Out of the Big Eight came Nebraska as at large. Actually, they're 29. They just had a forfeit of a game they played against Kansas State. That upped their mark a little bit, right? Remember that magic 20 number, too? Yep, sure did. Billy Gordon spinning just like his brother Lancaster. 5 nothing. Western Kentucky with a good start, Dave. This is what they wanted. Try to come out of the gate early for Nebraska. You just saw Mo Iber up off the bench saying, hey, settle down, run our stuff. This Nebraska team doesn't have any quit in them. You, know, you have to know that. That's right. Because of what they've done without hopping. They run the passing game here. A lot of motion. And like to run the clock down. Again, Logan walked as he tried to go inside. And the, Nebraska has been plagued by mistakes in the opening two minutes of this game. And I was saying right here, settle down. Boy, was his dad a legend. Absolute legend. Three-time United States Olympic coach. And truly one of the great men ever. Hank Ivan, the Iron Duke. He's Gives a lot of, look at that turnover picture. Gives a lot of advice to his son. Billy Gordon out of the corner. Western set it up. 7-0 Western Kentucky. And they have really been explosive. The game is not yet three minutes old. How many times now, Dave, you see the team open up like this when the other team suddenly catches fire and they, it turns into a real banger. Riding hard is Day. Rebound off by Swagger. Swagger's really made an impact on this team coming out of junior college. Well, Western, Western wants a furious pace, don't they? Underneath Martin for the layup. Won't go. Rebound Martin kept it alive. And finally off by Bernard Day. Nebraska just needs a field goal to get him off the mark here. Wow, well, in 15 seconds, they will have gone three minutes. And they've only had one shot. Today. Oh, yeah. Four trips up the court, three turnovers, one shot. Out by Day, and it almost went. See, what happens is now Western Kentucky gambles everywhere. They're overplaying, and they're switching up on every cross screen. Well, you don't do that. Oh, great drive on the inside by Day. Bernard Day led the score with almost 13 points a game and six and a half rebounds. Gets Nebraska's first points after three minutes of action, 72. Day has been the guy that stepped into the frame with a scoring when Hoffman went out. He's averaged 16.2 points a game since Hoffman's injury. McMurray has got Swagger posting down low against Day. And now Johnson foul from behind. It'll be on John Matsky. 6-7 senior. Mat was Matsky that beat Logan out at forward, and then when Hoppin went down, Logan got back in the lineup. I want to tell you a story about Clem Haskins and this man, Mo Iba, sometime later this evening. It's very, very interesting. Well, I'll tell you now. First college game that Mo Iba ever coached at Memphis State was against Western Kentucky, and their great star then was Clem Haskins. I'll tell you the rest of the story a little later. Gordon, a good box out by Nebraska. 72. Remember now, Nebraska scored the last two points in this game. Here goes Bernard Day breaking in as to clear it out. Carr, good shooter. Tough break on that one. A big rebound by Matsky gives Nebraska their first second chance of this game. And Carr got it open. Ooh, it blocked inside. Looked like Martin got a lot of ball. But they got a foul on Clarence Martin. But great move, great move by Carr here. We're going to get a chance to see it on replay. Good job on the truck. You see the overplay. This is what Nebraska is going to have to do to take away that pressure defense. Carr goes back door. Martin times it, but he gets him with the body. It's the 60th straight start for Brian Carr. His running mate, Harvey Marshall, at guard for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Carr averaged 12 points a game, 196 rebounds. You know, Swagger pulled up a little. He, he started off this game with uh, a big bandage on his upper leg, and, and it bothered him, and they took it off. I think he's okay. I just think it was wrapped too tight, probably. He's shaking his head like he's all right. Play in Western comes in with freshman Brett McNeil out of Minneapolis. Six, two and a half. So Clem Hafton still wants a three-guard lineup up there to match this Nebraska size. He's got a 6'10 player. He usually starts in Tellus Frank. Martin down low post, kicks it out to McNary. Ah, that was over the shoulder there for Western Kentucky, and Nebraska's beginning now to claw its way back into the picture here. Well, they're settling in. They're starting to take care of the basketball, and the other thing, they're doing a great job. Jim, you mentioned it earlier, and it was uh, evident on that play, is they're doing an excellent job of blocking out on the defensive board, and that will be critical for them in this game. 7-4 to four after a 7-0 start by Western Kentucky. 
And a little inversion on the weak side, trying to get the alley oop. There it is. There's today, the lob to Bernard Day. And Nebraska has scored six in a row to cut it to one. The Huskers are on the way back. McNary just kind of freelances his way through and draws the foul from Logan. That'll be number two. Logan, Chris Logan. Logan can't quite believe it. He thought he was stationary. Let's see if we can find out how Ray Swagger came up uh, Olympic. This is McNary. This is the last play. Okay. And, and he was a little movement. In this. That's a good call. And here's the play of Swagger. A little collision there. That was a collision, just a little yeah, bump there. A slight and flick on the way by. Well, apparently it wasn't anything bad. He's back in the lineup. So Swagger comes back on the court. McNeil stays in, and Bernard Johnson goes out. He's back without the wrap. You hear the term time of possession in football a lot, Jim. The time of possession is important in this game for Nebraska. They want to have the basketball a lot more in this game than the Hilltoppers do. And if they can keep the ball in their hand and run some time off clock and make Western Kentucky play half-court defense, it's going to be to their advantage. That stop a little dry spell for Western Kentucky. Back to nine to six goes the lead. Last three points. Still back court pressure in the zone trap here by Western. They get it across today. Well organized against the, against the press up there. Good four spread. One three one zone last day. And they got little guy. Looks like back there on the baseline. Swagger. He's now yeah, that's right. You got McNeary on the yeah. baseline. Look for Nebraska to try to find Day on the cross court pass. Get him sneaking in for the lob if they can. Spin by Logan. Baseline. Good position there. Was be taken away by Telus Frank. And here comes McNary and behind him. Matsky catches up to stop the fast break with 14 and a half minutes to go in the first half. A timeout. And at this stage, Western Kentucky, once leading seven to nothing, is now up by three. It's Western Kentucky nine. University of Nebraska six. And we'll be right back to Charlotte. Nine six Western Kentucky in the lead by three. This telecast is presented by authority of the NCAA, and any use of this program without written consent is prohibited. The announcers for this program have been approved and contracted by NCAA Productions. Transportation arrangements provided through Fugazi International Travel, the official travel agency for NCAA championships. Boy, look at that shooting! Forty percent, thirty-three percent. But that's the hectic pace I think Western Kentucky won. Well, I think both these teams have gone after each other defensively, too. The defense contributes to bad shooting. Martin down low. Tellus Frank turns it over. Right off his foot, it looked like. And so now Nebraska gets a chance to pull back within a point. Western led 7 0. Nebraska scored the next six. And now it's a three point lead. See, the danger for Western Kentucky, Jim, is Nebraska. Oh, the turnover against the press. Yep, that'll give it to Western down here in their attack court. Fourth turnover, I believe. The danger for Western, let me just finish that thought. If, if Nebraska can control the basketball, the danger for Western is that they may get too impatient to shoot it too quickly when they get it. Sometimes that's the, uh, that's the aim of the team slowing it down. They're going to have an offensive block call against Western Kentucky, I think, on uh, Swagger. Yep. Uh, it could be, yeah, it is. Billy Gordon, I believe. Billy Gordon, all right. So it's the first one on Gordon, or is it on Swagger? That's all, you're right. It's on Swagger. Great here comes the zone trap again. Nebraska just needs to be patient against this defense and reverse it. Play it very well. Play it very aggressively. Carr on the feed today. But our day hits. That's his sixth point. He's had every Nebraska field goal so far, and the Huskers are back within a point. So Western Kentucky, as you would expect, not able to maintain that furious pace at the outset where they jump in front seven now. Now McNary from the corner. Good, strong, weak side rebound by Day. Nebraska will run, but not very often. Good on the passing game. Bernard Day cuts behind the screen. Out of there's McNary with a rebound. Likes to push it hard. Last couple times up, Nebraska's done a good job of keeping it out of the inside. There goes uh, McNeil. Brett McNeil, who came on when Swagger came up limping, stayed in the lineup, and the former great star from Minneapolis. 
and high school rank. Makes it 11 or 8 again. I think this little guy with the ball is a key for Nebraska. Wow. Brian Carr, number one in the Big 8. Free throw percentage, too, so if you get the end of the game with him with the ball, you've got a great combination. He's the guy that's going to have to take care of it against this pressure and direct the attack. Good shooter he is from the perimeter, too. Day out of the corner. Rebound. Oh, a nice job inside by Logan. There's the 6'5 guy going up over the 6'8 and 6'9 to grab the rebound. He was one on three and still came down with it and pushed it back in, Jim. Big deal again from the corner. Nobody there but uh, Nebraska. Let's see how quick he took that shot. One pass shoot. Haskins up off the bench with both hands up now saying, hey, man, slow down a bit. That's the tendency when a team keeps you on defense for a while. And you're a team that likes to play transition. You tend to want to shoot it a little quicker than uh, than you can. Especially if the other team scores, right, David? Indeed. Outside shot by Marshall. First one he's taken. Another big rebound by Logan. Blocked this time. Logan pumps it up again, and this time he draws the foul. Why right, Logan giving away in zone is you don't cover your board real well sometimes. And there you see Marshall bro Logan playing big at 6'5. Goes to the glass. Well, you know, he was an outstanding track star in junior college out in California. He's got a 41 inch vertical jump. I couldn't get up 41 inches up on a ladder. Uh, that's exactly right without getting a nose loop. That ties the score for the first time, and this could be the first Nebraska lead of this game, and we played over eight minutes. Not a big percentage shooter in the line. Now we're tied. 11 all. Eleven and a half minutes to go on Charlotte in the Southeast first round game. Western Kentucky had the early lead, but Nebraska's fought back to tie the score. Western led 7-0, and Nebraska's come back. Jim Thacker with Dave Gavin here reporting this action. Nice take here of this in by Marshall, and a good rebound by Western Kentucky for Tellus Frank. Oh, he's settled into a good one. David. Subs off the bench now for Nebraska. Anthony Bayless. Usually comes in at guard, and let's see who goes off. He's going to Matsky's going to come out, which means that Marshall now will switch to forward, and that gives gives him a little more quickness. For one thing, doesn't it? Yeah, it doesn't give him any more size, though. No, nope, takes this away. Is a, this is a small Nebraska team without Dave Hoppin. Their center is out with a broken leg. One of the great centers in the country, and they have battled and battled tough. Done a good job on the defensive board. Now, tell us Frank tried to draw a foul there. Instead, he got himself off balance and missed the shot for Western. Now, Nebraska, an opportunity to take its first lead of the ball game. Well, considering they started behind seven to nothing, this would be a long shovel back after almost uh, nine and a half minutes of play. Midway in the first half, there's a screen out the side. He got off the fingertips of Bayless, intercepted by Johnson. Here comes McNary off the dribble. Western gets back in the lead. This is the key matchup right here. McNary working on Brian Carr. Carr needs to control tempo for Nebraska. McNeary and the Western Kentucky defense want to get him up. Want to get him up tempo. Want to try to get some turnovers. Carr needs this for a tie for Nebraska. And no. Inside again. The rebound by Marshall. And there's a personal foul against Western Kentucky. It's going to be Nebraska's ball still out of bounds. So the small coin husker are making up their lack of size by a lot of leaping underneath. That foul was on Billy Gordon his first. Well, they're very opportunistic. That's the third offensive rebound they've had. They pushed two of them back in for immediate points. Well, the earlier two by Logan. Well, we'll see a Western Kentucky zone against the out of bounds. Still a few teams able to play man for man this situation. Yeah. It's risky, isn't it? Not too many. Get him, get him. Well, Nebraska giving away a lot of height and inches, but giving away nothing and hustling hard. Here comes Logan. It's a great pass over to Marshall. And a foul on the play. They're going to get the basket and a possible three-pointer. And Mo Iba now has his team a little more in control. First foul is by Kennard Johnson, his second. And this is the way the game was intended to be played. Unselfish. You see it here. Bernard Day passes up the shot, finds the open man, cutting down the left side. Harvey Marshall gets the layup and a chance to complete the three-point play. That's going to give Nebraska its first lead of the ball game. 
So, with time out here and 9.54 to go in the first half from Charlotte, it's Nebraska 14, Western Kentucky 13. New kid on the block, Nebraska, out of all those football powerhouses out in the Midwest, now building basketball on a great name, Iba. Mo Iba, the son of Hank Iba, and he's brought Nebraska to its very first NCAA playoff. Rebounds telling the story, and it's the shorter Nebraska team holding the edge, almost double. Yeah, biggest guy, 6'5", really, but Logan has really been effective, and Day's done a good job blocking out. Harvey Marshall playing forward now, really. Outside shot is hit by Swagger. This guy is really immediately in given an impact to the West Kentucky game on a junior college. 15-14, back to the league goes West Kentucky on the drive, Marshall. Harvey Marshall's fifth score, and Nebraska turns the tables with a little break. Well, when you put Marshall up at forward, one thing you do create is better speed in the front court. Not time he broke out ahead of the field. Billy Gordon. And a famous brother played for Louisville, Lancaster Gordon. Here he is, number 20, Billy. Swagger again. Western goes up by three on the strength of Ray Swagger. Goes back in the lead on the strength of Ray Swagger shooting. Nine minutes to go in the half. Clem Haskin keeping fresh troops on to try to rotate them on car. Try to tire car out if he can. He's got Kirk Lee in there, the freshman guard from Baltimore. Comes out of a great program. Baltimore Dunbar, coached by Bob Wade. We saw his brother play earlier today, didn't we? Played for Xavier. Here goes Carr on a baseline drive. Rebound, Kennard Johnson. Up time, Western did not give up the rebound to Nebraska. Here's Lee, number 11. Baltimore High School Player of the Year last year, Dunbar. Kennard Johnson, low pulse, spinning, left-hand shot. First one for the special K, they call him around Western Kentucky and Bowling Green. He's out of Cincinnati. Three-point lead for the Hilltoppers. Well, he's tough to stop in low. And thus far, Nebraska's done a pretty good job of keeping the ball out of his hands. Western's stuck with his pressure man-to-man -man defense, pushing the tempo against Nebraska's wishes if they can. Boy, they're really sticking him out there. Here's Bayless fake inside foul from behind by Kennard by Thomas Frank. That was good ball handling inside against pretty good pressure. Very good pressure. Good strong overplay, good heat on the ball. But Nebraska, to their credit, they just kept running their offense and they finally shook the cutter free. Bayless going back door without the ball, pump fake to free one, and then Tellus Frank nails it from behind. It's 17 fouls against Western Kentucky. That means Nebraska from now on will be on the bonus. This will be a two shot situation, of course. Anthony Bayless. <laughs> Nebraska with 14 fouls. And they've played good, tough man to man defense themselves. They just don't extend with quite the pressure that's in Western's philosophy. This kid had a long jump of 27 feet, 7 inches, but it was win 80. That is some leaping. I don't care what was behind it. It was that's pretty good. Very good. Off, a, off a bridge, that's pretty good. 19 to 18. One point lead, Western Kentucky. Well, they've got a good mismatch inside there for a moment. That car on Tellus Frank. Here's Kennard Johnson. Got a help from the back from Logan. It'll still be Western Kentucky's ball. Western's hit its last four shots of Clem Haskins' team, but on a little bit of a roll. Clem the gym, they call him. Second draft choice. And a pretty good NBA career. Now Detroit, Washington, St. Louis. Ah, that's the way to hit the outside. That'll pull him out of it. 21-18. There's a final. Maryland has beaten Pepperdine. It's a very big win for Lefty Drizel. Pepperdine, an excellent team in the West. Tough place to play, and he played in the Long Beach. An excellent win for Lefty. And having done that, he now gets to play the running Rebels in Nevada, Las Vegas. That'll be another fast-moving game. Here comes Carl with the pick. Ooh, that was oh, deep. Yeah, he's very deep. Tim. He's got some range, this kid does. Very smart, all academic in the Big 8. Blind Carr. And what a great year for the Big 8. We talked about it earlier on. You know, it is a conference that's been known for football over the year. But their basketball, I have always thought, has not been given uh, enough attention. They've had great coaches like Jack Hartman. But this year, Kansas, Oklahoma, 
Uh, they both won. Iowa, Iowa State, State won today against Miami the last second check. Missouri a pretty good play. Missouri yeah. lost a tough two-pointer to UAB, and now we've got a, a good solid battle going on here. So good, great year for the Big East. Swagger again. He's four for four from the outside for Western Kentucky, and the Hilltoppers are leading it by three. He's the difference right now. Nobody else from Western will be with more than one field goal. Swagger has four. Good pressure out here. Gets the ball. Well, this is just old basic basketball here, Dave. Now we'll see if Nebraska can run their offense now and get something without Carr in the ball game. That'll be a hold and a block down here, and that's going to be on Miller. Fred Tisdale. Fred Tisdale. Fred Tisdale got it. Another score out of the East in the first half. Tulsa leading Navy 26-22. Outstanding coaching job by J.D. Barnett this year in his first year at Tulsa. And of course, Navy's had a run with Robinson. Should be no surprise. Barnett did a great job at Virginia Commonwealth. And Navy, for fans who have not seen him, believe me, David Robinson, their 6-foot, 11-inch center, is for real. He is a heck of an offensive player. Well, there's no doubt about that. On our day, six points already. Just a good opportunity there with his team trailing by three. Western 23, Nebraska 20. Six minutes to go in the first half. Got to do something to get Swagger shut down. And they put Day on him. They made a switch in assignments. They had Marshall on him before. Now Day has him. Here's Tisdale, who was a great high school star in the state of Kentucky. Good penetration by Gordon. Billy Gordon showing the genes of the Gordon family. 25-20, and Western's now back within two of its biggest lead. Long one by Darren Brown, and it's tipped out of bounds down here, so it'll still be Nebraska ball. Clarence Martin will return. He was out breaking with two personal fouls, and Carr's had a little of a rest, so he'll come back in for Nebraska. There's Carr, who's the quarterback indeed on the floor for the Cornhuskers. And a big job tonight. You know, it's like playing quarterback against a team that blitzes all the time in football. Oh, there's the alley oop. Yeah, too, little thrown bit, too hard. A little too much uh, oop and not enough alley on that one. 25-20 yeah. <laughs> Western. <laughs> Mo Ivers says, boys, you're only use, allowed to use that if you make it work. <laughs> That's like one of those, oh, no, clap, clap, clap jobs. And it goes in. Western by five. And that's seven nothing. That was the biggest lead. Nebraska scored the next six. Turnover situation, hurting Nebraska. Driving one handed by Gordon. Oh, was that a pretty move? Yeah. And again, Western leads by seven. Billy Gordon, uh, he's gotten it going. Nebraska wants to talk it over. Good out. timeout. That'll be timeout for Nebraska. Mo Iba wants to huddle up his team. They're falling off the pace again with 5-12 to go there. Timeout. Oh, Mo I've ever coached when he was at Memphis State. He played against Clem Haskins when Haskins was an All-American player at Western. Haskins scored 29 points and scored every field goal in the second half of that game for his team. Wow. Right here. A nice statistic on Western Kentucky. Let's put him back in the lead by seven. Still good man-to-man -man pressure. Clem has a daughter who's a heck of a player now, too. Clement, she is a terrific player. She is a cinch All-American in the NCAA this year. Good, uh, giving him a good chance to reach the Final Four again. Bayless on the front for Nebraska nails it. Big shot. Nebraska trying to get some backdoor cuts, but Western doing a good job of recovering. And here goes Billy Gordon with a nice reverse to the baseline as it blocked out of bounds. So they'll put it in play right here against the Western Kentucky team that probably is the best that's come off the hill at Bowling Green since the 1971 team to reach the Final Four. Uh, this has been a team that's taken Clem Haskins about four years in the Sun Belt to build, but it's a good one. And he did it in the year that the Sun Belt was tough. Put four teams into the NCAA tournament, as we said earlier, two of whom have already have won their first round games. Well, it only leagues to put more in is your league, Dave, the Big East, plus the ACC and the Big Ten had six apiece. Now we put four. That's this right, year. That's all. ACC, I guess the Big Eight had five. Big Eight had five, ACC and Big Ten six each. Back in now for Western Kentucky is Tellus Frank, who normally is a starter for Western, a 6'10 forward, but they put Swagger in at 6'3 to replace him because of the small, much smaller quickness of uh, Nebraska. If you see Western get a lead, though, then you'll see the big guys in there. Yeah. They can control things a little more. Bernard Day penetrating, dishing to Carr. 
Good rebound by Swagger, and here comes McNair. Car's back rimming everything. He's leaning a little bit on his jump shot tonight instead of going straight up. And the Gordon's been uh, making things happen. Here goes Gordon short this time. Kept alive by Tellus Frank, though, for Schwager. Inside the four-minute mark here in the first half. Western Kentucky 27 to 22 in the lead. Low scoring game, but it's been a poor shooting game caused by great defense today. I think it's been good defense on both sides. Martin jams inside and he's foul. Oh, wait a minute. Back in. Yep. I think it's a violation, though. Not Three seconds, foul. or are they calling for backing in? Might have got him for three seconds. Yeah, he's in there. I don't know when he got there, but he was solid in the lane. Now it's three second call. Otherwise, they would put it in at the end line, wouldn't they? But that must have been a violation. No foul. Nebraska's ball. Three second call. Yeah. 27 to 22. Western leads. Watch the overplay pressure now, and you'll see Nebraska trying to back cut him. Western right up in the passing lanes. There goes Carr off the dribble. And those are the two he's hit. He's hit both of them from the same spot coming to the right. He's been unable to hit them from the baseline, interestingly. You know, he's made his mark out there as a playmaker. He's had all the assist records at Nebraska. But he can score, too. That's the unknown part about his game. Good pass he gave here by Weston. Schlager off the dribble. First miss he's had in a while. Nebraska now get back, get back within a point. And a turnover and a double dribble by Bayless. Well, he almost got away with it. I thought he was going to get away with it. He was, he knew that he had done it. And he was trying to slide like it didn't happen. And the trail official picked it up. Well, See it right it. here. Easy. <laughs> he picked it up, didn't he? Yes, indeed. Well, what happened was the lead official was, was taken off early. He was half turned. And the trail guy had good position and picked it up. The truth of the matter is, Dave, compared to 10, 12 years ago, they, they do carry that ball. They allow it not more, a lot much more than they do used to. Well, you know where they allow it? They allow it to, to, to cross over and to get by me. Absolutely. Mark triple team feeding outside to tell us Frank tips it in. Well, Tellus could have made the first one, but he wanted a chance for an offensive rebound. That's why he laid it up. Oh, of course he did. Just like, just like his coach, Clem Hassan, wanted him to do. 29-24. Buster back up a five, two-minute mark in the first half. Here goes Day right down the middle, out of control. Martin with the rebound. Buster now can go back to another seven-point lead. They've had it twice. Seven nothing and 27 to 20. I think you'll see him try to get it down inside this time if they can. Like to get in there those big, strong guys like Martin, Order Frank. Bernard Johnson's on the bench right now. There goes to Tellus Frank. He turns right in the arms of Logan and turns it over. Where Logan has quietly played a heck of a game. He's really battled those big guys in there. Oh, well, he left a wide open. You can forget that. Bernard Day, a sharpshooter, has picked up a slack a lot since they've left, uh, lost Dave Hoppen and Mo Iba. Wants to get Natsky back in the lineup if he can before time runs out here in the first half. Minute 15 to go. 35 on the shot clock. Only a three-point lead by Western Kentucky. McNary gets a good inside screen, but he's blocked on the way by Carr. I think the foul will be called on the ground. And it'll be only, if it is, it's only Nebraska's fifth. Let's see. Yep. So it'll be out of bounds for Western Kentucky on the baseline. No shot, I don't believe. That was Matsky you saw as we turned. John Matsky, 6'7", senior forward, number 50. Ray Swagger has been the man who's carried it for Western Kentucky. Eight points so far. First zone of the game for the Cornhuskers now as they zone the out-of-bounds play. Now Western Kentucky sets up. they got plenty of time, 35 seconds, 53 seconds on the game clock. McNary gets a solid screen in there from Frank. Swagger again. Oh, I'm sorry, it was Swagger. You know, they look so much alike. They do. They go to the same barber. That's one of them. I was kidding with them before the game. They're two really nice kids. Good, high spirited kids. 31 26. Of course, Swagger's had a heck of a half. Ellis just ran down. That's he got away with it. Ellis, big kid. Well, that was a nice defensive play down there by uh, McNary. Well, it was, and it was a pass that Marshall shouldn't have thrown because he had the little guy, Carr, cutting baseline. Where's he going to go with it? Westerly looking for the last shot here inside the 10-second mark. Ah, uh -huh, bad turnover, and Swagger's the man there to fire him up and in. 
Boy, is he having a half. 12 points, and time will run out on Nebraska. Oh, yeah, for the third time, Western Kentucky has a seven-point lead, and that's what they'll take to the confines of the dressing room right now. There's the halftime score. Western Kentucky, 33. Nebraska, 26.